On March 15, 2025, a group of Italian researchers made a shocking discovery about the Great Pyramids of Giza. This discovery changes everything we thought we knew about the most studied pyramids in the world. These researchers believe that there's an entire city buried hundreds and even thousands of meters below the middle pyramid, the Pyramid of Khafre. This recent discovery was made by the Khafre team, who has been using sophisticated radar techniques to study what could be below these pyramids. These radar systems have detected eight cylindrical structures designed in two rows. These structures look like massive pillars and extend extremely deep into the earth. The team is estimating that these pillars begin at the base of the pyramid and then extend 630 meters into the ground. Just for reference, the tallest building in the United States is the One World Trade Center, which is 541 meters tall. That brings all eight of these pillars underground to be significantly taller than the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere. The eight pillars are surrounded by these downward spiraling features. The researchers believe that these features that look like coils are the staircases, which lead to the bottom of the pillars. At the bottom of these structures, 630 meters into the ground, there's said to be two massive hollow boxes. These boxes, or sometimes referred to as chambers, are 80 meters long by 80 meters wide and 80 meters tall. The radar system also detected these boxes to be mostly hollow. There's two of these boxes, where four of the pillars go into each. The craziest part is, is that these scans don't even stop here at 700 meters into the ground. From these scans, there's even more evidence of additional man-made structures under these massive boxes. The Khafre research team was picking up evidence of geometric structures that extend for 2 kilometers underneath the Earth's surface. The structures this deep underground are also believed to connect to all three of the major pyramids of Giza. The team believes that there could be an entire underground world built two kilometers below the pyramids. Just to get a reference on how deep underground this is, let's take the world's tallest building as an example. The Burj Khalifa in Dubai is 828 meters tall. These structures are so far underground that it would be like stacking two and a half Burj Khalifas on top of each other. If these radar findings turn out to be true, this would change everything we know about the ancient Egyptians. But how are these massive pillars just being discovered today in 2025? But before I get into that, you might have noticed that this entire video is a mix of 2D and 3D animation. These animations can take an incredible amount of time to create, but if you're a beginner and don't have the skills, time, or money to do this, you can check out today's sponsor, NVIDIA AI. With NVIDIA AI, anyone, regardless of skill level, can create high-quality 2D and 3D animations like the ones you're seeing in this video. All you have to do is type in the idea you have for a video to this section, press Generate Video, and then NVIDIA AI processes together a full-length video on this topic. From here, you can fine-tune your video and edit it by using text-based commands. You can start the video with an anecdote, translate the entire video to French, and even adjust the volume of the background music, all just by typing in the edit command box. You can even clone your voice so that you can use this for all the videos you create with NVIDIA AI. Typical editing softwares have a steep learning curve where there can be hundreds of different tools all taking time to learn. With NVIDIA AI, you can focus on being the director of your own video rather than taking the time to learn how to edit. The best part is, you can try NVIDIA AI today for free. This will save you either all the time it would take to edit, or even save you the hundreds or even thousands of dollars it would cost to hire different editors and animators. Try out NVIDIA AI today by using the link in my description, and thank you NVIDIA AI for sponsoring this video. The Khafre research team claims that they are using a method that has never been used before in archaeology. This discovery was made by using a synthetic aperture radar, which sends vibrational energy into the ground. This radar measures how the vibrational waves bend, reflect, or slow down as they pass through the different materials in the ground. The vibrations will reflect differently depending on whether they hit water, sand, stone, metal, etc. The vibrations that were recorded up at the ground surface by the Khafre team reveal that the pillar-like formations don't match the natural rock layers. In these seismic topography readings, the darker red indicates where these pillars are located. 
Despite the evidence this team has presented, they've still been met with many critics. Look, I'm just going to be frank here. I think that uh, I would love this kind of stuff to be true, but it is total b And in fact, the depth of the water table is dozens of meters. So anything they have found would actually have been completely submerged underwater. One of the biggest concerns with these findings is that there is a water table beneath the Giza Plateau. For reference, the Giza Plateau is the slightly elevated surface that is home to three of the most famous pyramids in the world. There's the Great Pyramid, or otherwise known as Khufu's Pyramid, then the slightly smaller Pyramid of Khafre, which is where the underground pillars were detected, and then the third is known as the Pyramid of Menkure. This is the smallest of the three, but still once stood at 215 feet tall. Next to the Pyramid of Menkure were the three much smaller pyramids that were built for the queens and other royal family members. There's G3A, which was the largest of the queen's pyramids, G3B, and then G3C, which was likely never finished. While all these pyramids sit on solid, sturdy land, just below this plateau is meters deep of water. This water is said to begin at roughly 15 meters below the sea level. The deeper you go from there, the more water starts forming. Despite all this underground water, the ancient Egyptians still attempted to build chambers and other tunnels underground. Before the Khafre Project's recent discovery, the deepest known structure below the pyramids was a subterranean chamber below the Great Pyramid. This chamber is roughly 30 meters below the Great Pyramid of Giza and was never actually finished. These pyramids, being on the Giza Plateau, are naturally more elevated than their surroundings. Because these pyramids sit at a slightly higher elevation, the ancient Egyptians were able to build this subterranean chamber 30 meters underground, just high enough before reaching the underground water at 15 meters below sea level. The subterranean chamber is one of the three chambers in the Great Pyramid. The king's chamber and the queen's chamber sit much above in the actual pyramid structure. The king's and queen's chamber were actually finished and have many inscriptions all over the walls. The subterranean chamber does not have any inscriptions and still has a very rough floor showing that it was never completed. There was also no air shaft built for this chamber so it would have been very difficult to stay down here for an extended period of time. This chamber remains dry, being just above the underground water's level, but there's another underground chamber that is now completely submerged by water. Also 30 meters below the Giza Plateau is the Osiris Shaft. The entrance to the Osiris Shaft is in between where the Great Pyramid is and where the Sphinx is located. The Osiris Shaft wasn't discovered until 1933, and its floors deep underground weren't discovered until the early 2000s. This entrance, known as Shaft A, leads you down 9.6 meters until you reach the first level. The Osiris Shaft is constructed vertically and has three main levels to it. On this first level is Chamber A, which is roughly 5 to 7 meters below the ground surface. This chamber was cut into the bedrock, likely by hand. There were no artifacts or burials found here in modern times, so not much is known about what went on in this chamber. Moving down another level to 15 meters below the surface is the second level, where you will find Chamber B. Unlike the first level, there was actual archaeological remains found on this level. There were wooden sarcophagi on this level that were very deteriorated and empty. These were believed to contain bodies from the late period though, which was around the years of 664 BCE to 332 BCE, much after the pyramids were originally built. And then moving down even more is the third level, which is roughly 30 meters under the ground surface. This is the lowest chamber and is now flooded year-round. The third floor was believed to have a massive sarcophagus submerged in the water that nobody had explored until modern times. In 1999, the director of the Giza Plateau assembled an elite unit of divers to uncover what was on the third floor of the Osiris Shaft. The water in this third shaft is very cold, murky, and full of ancient silt. Visibility in this water is close to zero, making it extremely difficult diving conditions. However, with modern diving equipment, these divers found a large granite sarcophagus submerged in about a meter of water. When the divers opened up the sarcophagus, they found it completely empty and with no inscriptions, meaning there was no way of knowing who was buried here. Although there was no remains found, this was still a historic moment for the Giza Plateau, as this was believed to be the deepest point that the ancient Egyptians went to on the Giza Plateau. The air is so poor at this third level though, that the divers could only spend 10-15 to 15 minutes down here at a time to avoid serious health risks. 
Given all this underground water at just 30 meters below the Giza Plateau, skeptics of the Khafre project are doubting how there could have been pillars this large built in so much water. The one other instance of underground structures that we can confirm to be true of the Giza Plateau is at the Giza Workers Cemetery. This cemetery is mainly on the southwest side of the pyramid and features rows of tombs that are 6 to 10 meters underground. Buried in these underground tombs were the highly skilled engineers that helped build these pyramids. These were not the peasants, these were the highly educated inspectors and engineers that were well fed and well respected. Some of their titles were inscripted into the graves, which have been translated to Inspector of the Craftsman or Overseer of Stone Transport. Many of the bodies discovered here were shown to have broken bones. This shows the hard physical labor that was required building these pyramids, which was common even with the more high-ranking engineers at the time. There were also remains of goats and oxen discovered here, which were likely used to feed the workers. Many believe that these pyramids were built by slaves, but historical records actually show that the workforce was made up of skilled workers and seasonal crews. The reason archaeologists believe this is because the skeletons of these workers show that their fractures and breaks in their bones were carefully reduced and treated for. This was evidence that medical care was given to these workers to help heal their bones that were broken during the intense physical labor. The archaeological remains also show that these workers ate more protein than the general population, so they were likely much better fed. Many archaeologists also believe that these workers constructed underground tunnels that connect the three pyramids. These have never been found, but many ancient Egypt enthusiasts say they have reason to believe why this could be true. Despite all these years of research, what's holding archaeologists back from truly discovering what lies below these pyramids is none other than government regulations. The Egyptian government strictly regulates and controls any digging or excavations on the Giza Plateau. This is primarily to preserve and protect the archaeological heritage of Egypt, but many archaeologists say otherwise. A famous psychic from the early 1900s known as Edgar Cayce became famous for his theory of a hall of records located below the Sphinx at the Giza Plateau. Cayce's belief is that there is an underground chamber below the Sphinx, which is essentially an ancient library. This library has records of lost texts, technological secrets, and historical records of advanced prehistoric civilizations. Many people have tried getting to the Hall of Records, especially since the 20th century when this idea became more popular. However, most of these attempts have either been inconclusive or blocked by the Egyptian government. Governments generally hide many of their country's most valuable secrets. Another ongoing conspiracy that I am fascinated by is if Pakistan helped bin Laden hide in their country. Bin Laden lived in a compound known as the Abbottabad compound, which was destroyed shortly after Navy SEAL Team 6 took him out there. All the evidence was removed and nobody knew much about bin Laden's life in this home. I put together an in-depth video of bin Laden's 19 different hideouts scattered around the Middle East, where you can watch that video right here.